Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Oh <laughs> it can't recognize me. We're trying again. Hey, Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I was hanging on the ceiling. Yeah, so it's for the last module, we can't really grade encephalopathies unless we know what voltage means and burst suppression attenuation. Yeah, we're in the netherlands of, of encephalopathy here. Yeah, let's review some definitions. So first, suppression, when we say EEG shows suppression, we mean the voltage is less than 10 microvolts. And actually, by the way, for suppression and attenuation, we're talking about things that happen intermittently, typically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a period when it's less than 10 and then it goes back, you know, uh, above, that's a suppression. Attenuation, it the voltage goes down and it goes down, you know, to more than 50% or by a, by a, by at least 50%, but maybe not to, but not down to 10 microvolts, that would be attenuation. Yeah. And we, and we, we use these terms burst attenuation or burst suppression when we're getting attenuations or um, suppressions, these little episodes of, you know, flattening out of the EG um, that happen that take up at least 50% of an epoch. So let's say you're looking at a, 15 second page, right? You'd need to have at least half of that would be half would have to be attenuated or suppressed. Got it. Okay. And I think the only other case is when there's no burst, it's just suppression, then we just call it diffuse suppression. Yeah, we could call it just suppression, or we can call it very like I think we call it very low voltage. We might just describe the voltage. Both of those terms apply in that case. Okay. All right. And then, of course, if there's going to be suppressions that are intermittent, then there has to be something in between. We call those bursts, and those have to be at least half a second long, right. and they have to have some phases. Um, okay. Yeah. So if if those yeah if we have less than four phases, we just call them discharges. And um, right, yeah. So and then we're going to also talk about burst suppression with epileptiform. Oh, here we go. Look at this. So. <laughs> we have continuous EG at the top. Yeah. We have nearly continuous. So there's there's an intermittent brief little period of mm -hmm. I would call this an intermit intermittent brief you know suppression here. Mm -hmm. Um and then we have discontinuous but it's you know less than 50% of the time it's suppressed. So these are still intermittent brief you know suppressions or attenuations. Um but mm -hmm. then then we actually get into what's officially called burst suppression in this case or you know, because it, it's flat. If it was less a fifty percent reduction, but not ten microvolts, we'd call it burst attenu burst attenuation. Okay. And we have complete suppression or attenuation at the bottom. Got it. Yeah. So just going back to what you're you're teaching me, um, there's two ways to look at amplitude, I believe, depending on um, on the criteria you're using. So one of them is simpler. It's purely just looking at the voltage. And if it's less than 20, it's very low amplitude. If it's 20, 20 to 50, it's low. 50 to 150, it's medium. And greater or equal to uh, 150, it's high, right? Mm -hmm. But then if we're, if we're doing like you were, you were teaching me um, in, in terms of suppression or attenuation, then as you said, suppression would be less than 10 microvolts um, or attenuation would be greater than 10, but less than 50% of everything else in the back, right? Right. And, and actually the, the terms on the right, we would typically use for um, when the EG is continuous, just to, to have a word to say what the voltage is. We could also use the numbers, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, uh, the ones on the left are, are terms we use when there's these intermittent patterns, mm -hmm. uh, burst attenuation or burst suppression. So let's take a look at some examples. Here, the voltage is low. So if you, Look at that little scale bar that go, you know, shows you what 100 microvolts looks like. Mm -hmm. You can kind of eyeball it and you can see that this is somewhere between 20 and 50 microvolts. Mm -hmm. Getting more exciting, talking about those, those intermittent brief generalized attenuations. Right. So when, what, do you, what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, so here's, this is interesting. I think, <clears throat> so it looks like there's, you know, GPDs going on. Um, the uh, 
And then every once in a while, the EG goes, the voltage drops. It mm -hmm. gets the GPDs go away and it gets a little bit flat for a while. Mm -hmm. I think it's this is an is a case of uh, we would call it a you know an attenuation, a brief attenuation. Mm -hmm. um, it's not 50% suppressed, so we wouldn't call it, you know, officially we would not call it burst attenuation or or burst suppression, but mm -hmm. these are intermittent brief attenuations. Yeah. Okay. And I think just a, a reminder, so when we see GPDs or discharges in the background, it's easy to overlook the more subtle, if you will, findings, right? But it's important to describe them both, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because this this suggests, yeah, additional problems. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that this is a drug effect. Maybe somebody's giving this patient medication to try to, mm -hmm. um, you know, make these things go away, um, or maybe the brain is getting quite exhausted, right? Maybe these are a sign that uh, something, something's additional is wrong, like a metabolic crisis of some kind. Right. So it can't keep up the discharges all the time. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So let's watch out for those as well. Yeah. Those attenuations. Um, so just another example, um, so if you kind of see it from, from afar, from a distance, you can see that there's something of higher amplitude in the middle, and then it kind of flattens out a little bit, and then another burst of activity, and then flattens out again. So the same concept, uh, it's the amplitude of these flatter areas are less than 50% of the background activity, so we would call it attenuation, it's everywhere. Um, so we call it generalized and they're brief. So we call them brief. I think I agree with you, but is this um, burst attenuation? Sure, that's a good point. I think it's a little less than 50%. So if I count one, so how many seconds are on this page? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15? 16, 15, 16, yeah. yeah so, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five or yeah, I think five or six of these seconds are um, attenuated, so it's less than half. So not not burst attenuation. Right. So if it was more than fifty percent, then we'll call it burst attenuation. Yeah. Right. Perfect. So getting flatter now, um, which is flattering, so it's suppression, um, or if you want to look at the uh, just the amplitude classifier, very low. It's being yeah. Twenty right. Yep, I think these two terminologies begin to clash because, uh, <laughs> yeah. but probably we should go with the suppression term. So that, yeah, this is generalized suppression. It's also very low voltage. Mm -hmm. right. This and you can see the ECG artifact. By the way, that's interesting, right? So you can see if when uh, it's very low voltage, it's really small. So let's keep going. Just another example of the same diffuse oh. suppression. Right. What about that? Uh, fast stuff at the at the front is that is that muscle yeah it's probably just muscle yeah. sometimes it's well, even in a in a patient with coma following cardiac arrest you sometimes still see muscle tension at the front gotcha. and um you know that's unfortunately not necessarily uh, an encouraging sign it's not brain activity switching to burst suppression which as you mentioned can be further classified as with or without epileptic form activity. And then there's the highly epileptic form burst that you all teach it, right? Yeah. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Start with those, actually. <laughs> so yeah, this is, so first is this burst suppression or not? Um, so I think, yeah, if you count up how much of it is flat, it's gonna be pretty close to 50%. Mm -hmm. um, this may be, I, I, th I think it's first suppression. We'd have to count, but let's just say it is. It's 50%. It's close to the line. Yeah. And then um, if it is, then, th then these are, the bursts look very abnormal, right? They're full of epileptiform discharges and they are, um, looks like there's little complexes of maybe three or two. Mm -hmm. And so um, all the bursts have at least uh, two uh, epileptiform discharges. And then and they occur at more than, you know, at at least one hertz, which, so those two things have to be true. You have to have at least two discharges in a burst and they have to be at least one hertz. So right. to be highly um, Right. And I think, I think you can, if they have any potentially ictal pattern within the burst, you can also call them highly epileptic. You mean birds, bird suppression? That's, <laughs> yeah, it'd be even cooler. Yeah. 
Yeah. What about this one? Yeah, this is just regular birth suppression without epileptiform activity. So this is this is what it looks like if you give too much propofol or um, too much maybe. So you can get this with midazolam at high doses, other drugs as well. Let's wrap up. So first, um, attenuation mm -hmm. and suppression. So um, here we're talking about patterns where there's intermittent flattening of the EEG. And if it flattens by um, so that it goes down to less than 10 microvolts, then we call it suppression. If it if it's not less than 10 microvolts, but it's you know decreased by at least 50% relative to the preceding background, we call it attenuation. Sounds good. And then if you look at only the amplitude, regardless of being birth suppressed or not, just overall, then you can always we can also classify them in different categories. Um, and just for the purposes of our encephalopathy, um, you can you can call them uh, low voltage if it's between 20 and 50 microvolts, or very low voltage being less than 20 microvolts. Yeah. And then we have um, things that are not burst suppression or and not burst attenuation, but nevertheless, you have little brief periods where the EG flattens out, and, and usually that is generalized, and we call those um, intermittent brief attenuations or just generalized attenuations. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we have two different burst suppression patterns, um, uh, one with, with epileptiform activity and the other without epileptiform activity. And the type epilept with epileptiform activity can be broken down to with highly epileptiform bursts or without a highly epileptiform burst that we that we looked at previously. Right. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks, boss. Now we're ready. Ready to grade some EEGs out there. <laughs>